Shalom, party people, and welcome to the 12th seat. Joshua Stone, 2666, and maybe you should look into changing that, just saying. I mean, is it 666 or is it 616? I don't know. Over on YouTube asks, in adversarial situations, what is your go-to method to reach mutually beneficial outcomes? What have previous altercations taught you? Oh, breaking that down a little bit. When people are button heads, what works? Sorting things out. Mr. Joshua Stone, I've got two recommendations for books for you. Number one, it's a book called Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss, FBI hostage negotiator. Very, very successful record. And then the other one is Robert Greene, 48 Laws of Power. And the answer to that is going to be summing up a lot of key things in both of those books. But Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss is negotiating like your life depends on it. How to negotiate well. How to negotiate in such a way that the other person thinks that your idea was their idea. Very, very good book. And the 48 Laws of Power is 48 very long form answers in how you can use things for your advantage, how others may use things against you, and just a, a case study in human psychology. Very, very good work. And it's a long read, but it's worth it. A couple of things on dealing with people butting heads. If you can prep in advance, you can't always, but if these are people that you interact with, or if maybe this is a more formal situation where things are coming down the pipe and you can see them coming down the pipe because of the formalities that exist. Because uh, I've, I've dealt with both types where it just comes out of nowhere and I've dealt with where you knew it was coming for a long time. But on the beforehand, if you can prep building rapport and showing empathy, those are two very, very key features and never split the difference. And that building rapport and showing empathy isn't always with your accuser, isn't always with someone who is your adversary, isn't always, you know, that person who just, you guys don't see eye to eye. Sometimes it's with the people who are gonna be moderating what's going on, mediating what's going on. Sometimes it's with the people who are just, bystanders, but building rapport and showing empathy, two very, very key things. And that's going to play into when your argument with your actions, not with your words. That is a feature that plays heavily in one of the 48 laws of power. And another one would be gather intelligence. You can use your empathy and your rapport building to gather that intelligence because people will freely forfeit that kind of information up to you when they have rapport with you when you're showing empathy. Also, with your actions, that is going to help in gathering intel as well. But while you're gathering that intel, you can be looking for what Never Split the Difference refers to as the black swan. And that's that key detail that once you have that information, that changes everything about what's going on because it actually reveals what that person's intentions were. You also need to master the art of timing. And when you are mastering that art of timing, that plays into everything else because you're winning with your actions, you're showing and not telling, and you're also able to gather that appropriate intel intelligence in advance. And another one 
is plan all the way to the end. Not just your next couple of steps, but your next 500 moves, not just your next five. All the way to the very end, to its full conclusion, to where it's been years after this has gone through, and you can just breathe now. It matters a lot. If you can prep that kind of stuff, win with your actions, not your arguments, gather intelligence, master the art of timing, and plan until the end, on the forefront, you may completely avoid the situation. But having that set is going to matter. Physically coming into the argument, the altercation, you know, the proceedings, whatever it is, say less than what is necessary. Make them ask the questions. You do not have to over explain yourself. Make them feel smarter than you are. Make them feel more powerful than you are. Not ceding those things over to them, but when somebody feels more powerful in the situation, when somebody feels smarter in the situation, it throws them off guard. Appeal to the selfishness of that person, not to their virtue. Dealing with their selfishness, everybody, I don't care who you are, everybody has wants, needs, desires in life. And if your solution that you are trying to bring into the situation satisfies their base needs, wants, desires in life, that is going to set you up for success. Oh, hey, you know, you should really think about, you know, doing this nice thing for me because, you know, you'll, you know, be the better person doing that. No, that doesn't work. But when you're, hey, I know that bottom line is really, really important to you. And if we do X, Y, and Z, this will, number one, be done substantially quicker. We're both going to walk away feeling relatively satisfied so you're not going to have to deal with me coming back at you in you know 30 60 90 days to try and you know amend this it's like it's just going to be done and bottom line you're just not going to have to deal with this anymore why don't why don't you consider that those types of things or hey you know their their selfishness isn't their bottom line their selfishness is you know they want to feel honored and important in what's going on. So, hey, you know, you you doing this, everybody's going to be able to look at you and go, man, that dude's a stand-up dude because of the way he handled this situation. People are going to think well of you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe their selfishness is in financially providing for their family. Hey, you know, if we spend time knocking this out now, you know, that's that's pay that we'll get. You know, we're probably going to get commendations for getting stuff done. You know, that, that's going to lead to, you know, maybe promotions. And maybe that, that's going to lead to a situation where maybe we get approval for unrestricted overtime. So you're just, you're going to have what you need. Never thought about that. Those kinds of things appeal to what makes them tick in a good way. It matters. Also, act with boldness. Don't, oh, you know, maybe, maybe have you considered if we just, you know, hey, let's do this. Shoot straight. Ask. What's the worst they're going to tell you? Oh, no, we can't do that? Okay. Well, part of Never Split the Difference is getting to know. If you get to the word no, you have established hard limits now. And 
now that you have those limits, okay, I know what we're dealing with. So I know I can't go too far to the left, I know I can't go too far to the right, I know I can't go too far forward, too far back. Here's the box that I'm operating within now. And because we're operating in this box now, I know what the rules are. Now, maybe there's some areas where I can push, and that's where I'm gonna be bold. But you're gonna find out really fast what they deem as acceptable and what they deem as not. If you're bold and you push those limits a little bit and then you find out what the hard limits are, ask. Ask for more than you think you deserve. You never know. They might give it to you. You also want to get to a point in that discussion where they feel heard. That's where the empathy and the rapport comes into it. When they are saying, yes, that's right, they feel understood. They feel heard. And when someone feels understood, they are much more apt to agree with whatever it is you're asking for because they, they feel like you are considering what they have to say. It matters. If you're just railroading over somebody, you know, if you're using your boldness to like shoot them down, it doesn't work too well. Ultimately, if those things don't solve the situation, you're probably going to have one of two choices. You will either have to crush your enemy completely, scorched earth, nothing, nothing of theirs gets approved, walks away, feeling happy at all, crush them completely, or surrender, fully, fully surrender, so that way you can recover. Sometimes you just got to cut it loose. It is what it is. In all of those notes, winning with your actions, not your arguments, people will see your actions and they will understand what you've got going based off of what you're doing. What you're doing tells more about who you are and what you're about than anything that you say. Anything that you argue, people will see what you're doing and, oh yeah, he was right. Or, you know what, this dude's a stand-up dude. I don't care what anyone else says, this is what I see. You know, he does X, Y, and Z when he says he's going to do X, Y, and Z. Matters. Gathering that intelligence, honestly, you should know enemy, you should know your adversary, you should know your accuser, you should know whatever you want to call them. You should know them better than they know themselves in the intelligence that you're gathering. You should know how they're going to react to whatever stimulus comes their way. It makes things a lot, a lot easier to navigate. When you're mastering that art of timing, able to know how hard to go, when to go that hard, and if it's even going to be worth it. There are things that probably need to be said, but maybe you don't need to say them right now. Maybe you need to say them when cooler heads are prevailing. Maybe you need to say them at just the right time. It matters. Planning all the way to the end. If you are able to have the full spectrum of what needs to happen, you know every single thing that you have to do, what points are critical, what points can deviate, and what your actual end goal is. Because sometimes, sometimes people don't have the right end goals. Sometimes the things that people think are the end goals are actually just steps. Sometimes they've put an end goal on something that's completely unrealistic to what actually needs to happen. It matters. Plan all the way to the end, step by step by step. How am I going to get there? What am I going to do next? What happens if this doesn't work? If this
this fails, what am I gonna do to make sure that the next thing that needs to get done doesn't fail? Those are the type of things that you need to be going over. Saying less than what's necessary gives your opponent, your adversary, your accuser, whatever you wanna call them, it gives them less ammunition to use against you. I mean, your introductory statement to your Miranda rights, anything that you say can and will be used against you, less is more in that situation. Letting the other person feel smarter. You know, I've had supervisors who, if it wasn't their idea, they didn't want to hear it. And so priming them throughout the day with just subtle hints, subtle nudges, you know, you put this piece of paper on their desk at the right time, and then you ask the right question in conjunction with that, so that is the art of timing, to where, hey, you know, we have these two options, and, you know, we could do this or we could do this, but I'm, I'm not really sure which one's right, even though you darn well know which one's right but they're the one who picks the right option. Ah, oh, yeah. You know, now that I think about it a little bit more, that is, that is a really good idea. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Or yeah, you know what? You're the boss. You've been doing this a lot longer than I have. Making them feel smarter than you. And doing it right, not where you're laying it on thick you're going to have that situation where when they feel smarter than you do, the control's actually in your hands, but they still feel like they're the ones who are making the calls. So the desired outcome is actually a lot better because everybody's in agreement on what needs to be done at that point. For planning all the way to the end, mastering that art of timing, that is relatively as self-explanatory as it gets. Be as detailed as possible and be specific with what you are doing. And it's going to matter. The choices that you may or may not have to deal with Sometimes you have to crush your enemy completely because if you don't, they will come back again and again and again and again, and there will be no rest. Sometimes you have to, you know, fall on your sword and yeah, you were right this whole time and I've been doing wrong and this is what needs to you know, to happen for me to, to make this right. Sometimes those are the cases. And I really think that whenever these types of situations come up, you'll know the right thing to do pretty early on. If you go into the situation as prepared as possible, you will walk away with the best possible outcome, but that plan is still a point of deviation. So it, it can go sideways. Um, if you crush your enemy completely, that is a tactical decision that you will have to know in advance when bringing all of the receipts, not in a hateful way, but laying out everything that has been done, everything that is relevant so that way the case that you bring is airtight and the people who are, you know, weighing these decisions are like, oh yeah, okay, this is bogus. Or wow, this person really is coming forward in a good, good manner. If you're hateful about it, it will not end well. If you are surrendering and lay everything out, 
that actually can go in your favor. I've had situations where I was 100% in the wrong. And instead of trying to hide something, instead of trying to lie about it, instead of trying to weasel my way out, hey, this is what happened. This is what I did. It was wrong. And you said last time that if this ever happened again, that these were going to be the consequences. And so I don't like that option, but I 100% understand when that is the intended outcome with what your decision is probably going to be. And a lot of times you're quite literally putting the ball in their court on that. And they're like, I know I said that, but if I do that, I'm going to, you know, not really be comfortable with that decision. I'm not going to be able to live with, you know, following up on my word on this one. Because sometimes they say those things and they don't really mean them. So the surrendering, and it's a genuine surrender, it's not a tactic, but a genuine surrender in that sometimes paints them into a corner. And so they either have to, A, keep their word, which they're fully entitled to do, or B, back out of it. And then they look like the merciful person in doing that. And they are merciful for doing it. But like I said, they may have said those things and never actually meant them. And so in a way, you could potentially be calling their bluff. That only works when you're genuine. And even then, it doesn't always come out in your favor. The prep work in advance leads to substantially better results, in my opinion. A lot of times, you're not going to get into the crush your enemy completely scenario. You're not going to get into the surrender scenario. You're going to be articulate in what you have to say. Here's the case. Here's what's going on. This is what I would like. I want this, this, and this. And be surprised with those answers having the rapport and the empathy on the front end drastically improves, drastically improves those outcomes. Because then you're not coming from a sleazy ask. You are coming from a, hey, I know you, you know me. You know I'm not blowing hot air. This is my genuine ask. And they know that you're genuine because that rapport has been built. And they understand that you empathizing with them is not a situation where you're just coming in demanding you will do this, you will do this. So for what that's worth, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss and The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Those are two phenomenal books that I highly recommend reading. Um, all of Never Split the Difference fully applies to the question that you've asked. Um, it has been very useful for me. I have learned a lot in reading that book, and I go back to it several times a year. Um, and then the 48 Laws of Power. Obviously, you're not going to keep all 48 Laws of Power because then you're going to be a really, really awful person if you do. But it saves you from becoming that way if you have the self-awareness to, to put it there. Um, it also saves you from having those laws used against you because um, there's a lot of things that I just thought were normal human behavior until all of a sudden I realized after reading that book that oh hey these are manipulation tactics that people are using against me use your superpowers for good not for evil there's stuff in there that yeah you can use for destruction but you can also use for very very desirable outcomes for everybody go do hard things